Just looking, we're just after watching Galway mm. beat Dublin in a Walsh Cup semi final, which obviously doesn't really amount to a hill of beans in the grand no, scheme. Slow I think. Key stuff, yeah. yeah. But where do you think Galway are at coming into this season after not getting out of the Leinster Championship last year? Yeah, it's it's hard to assess, to be honest, at this time of the year. Obviously, there was a lot of fallout over last summer. Galway's earliest championship exit since 1964 here at Parnell Park. Uh, it's kind of a freak result in, in Wexford Park the same evening where Kilkenny and Wexford drew, put Galway out, paid the price for not beating Carl enough, but little did anybody think that night that uh, we'd end up with a new Galway manager going into 2020. Uh, there has been controversy down there. There was the issue with Supermax and the sponsorship and, you know, Michal Donoghue stepping down in the race to find a, a new team manager. And subsequently then, of course, you had, uh, you know, there was ructions at county board level. There was a challenge to the county board chairman, Pat Kearney, which he starved off. So there's been a fair bit of off, off the field. I suppose controversy since Galway lost in the championship and I suppose some of it is a legacy of that so Shane O'Neill is in there now he'll be content that Galway come up here to Parnell Park and uh, the scene of the crime last June uh, it's always better to win than lose and um, whether they wanted a, a long trip down to Wexford for the Walsh Cup final next weekend is debatable but you can't beat games but you could see uh, Galway are you know they're only starting off the same as Dublin Dublin probably three games in seven or eight days does eventually take its toll the pitch cut up a little bit but I say Galway will be happy enough and look at Shane we all know in sport um, what's a big thing three months ago can become a very small thing people have very short memories and if Galway get a bit of a run in the league you know Last, last year's early championship exit will soon be forgotten about. Mm. Like you're a former Galway manager, mm. what's the pressure like in Galway? When, and I know Shane O'Neill doesn't mm. live in Galway, but what is the pressure like when you're a manager of a team like Galway? Well, I suppose in every county that has aspirations of winning an All-Ireland title, it is severe enough. And How would uh, that manifest itself in? Well, you're kind of conscious that you know, you have to have Galway in at the business end of the championship and as a manager, if you don't get them there, you're underachieving. I suppose Galway have come under a lot of pressure in terms of targets for the senior team over the past 20 years because of the success at underage level in the, in, in, at inter-county level. Galway have won a heap of all Ireland minor titles. They've picked up a fair few under-21 as well. And then you had Galway's dominance of the All-Ireland Club Championship. They won 11 All-Ireland Club titles in 23 years and that's phenomenal and people then are asking the question where's all this talent gone so the bottom line is Shane since 1988 Galway have won a single All-Ireland title and uh, you know when you look at all the good stuff that's been done at minor under 21 and at club level you'd have to say that's that's a, a poor return uh, but they can't do anything about the past neither can Shane O'Neill he's in there he's a new broom uh, he's David Ford and Fergal Healy, two former Galway players involved with him. And, um, you know, Galway are never going to be too far away. But I think what's happened over the past six months in the county, over on and off the field, has set them back. Yeah. Do you, and do you think the legacy of that could continue into this year? Or is that something whereby like, players, realistically, they hear all the background noise. Once they go back to training, that all fizzles out and yeah. is no longer relevant. Well, that's my point. If Galway can get get on a bit of a run in the league, and I think it'll be important for them to have a, a fairly strong uh, league campaign, uh, that they have built up some momentum for the championship. Obviously, Shane O'Neill is going to put his own spin on the type of player he's looking for. And uh, I think Galway need to discover three or four new players. Some of those lads were, are, were there in my time. Aidan Hart, David Bourke, Joe Canning, James Scahill. Like that's going back to 2011, Shane, and uh, they can't keep going forever. So Galway need to discover a bit of, of new talent that's able to hack it at the highest level. When Joe Canning got injured last year, is, is it unfair to say that not enough leaders stepped up in the forward line? And that is, of course, like the flip side is they did win in Nolan Park. The day Jay and Cahal Mannion had a, an absolutely, he gave a master class of, of shooting that evening and uh, you saw it there this evening uh, here in the Walsh Cup final, your, your, your first 20 minutes he hasn't done a whole lot to influence the game and then he scores two terrific points in the space of 90 seconds so he has that talent and he's one of the players really 
I mean, he was Galway's best player last year over the course of the year. Uh, so Galway need the likes of him to be as consistent as they possibly can be. And, um, you know, Joe obviously is still a, 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 a terrific player at the highest level. And uh, the St. Galway are going to have access to the St. Thomas's players now earlier than this time last year. So that that's that's all going to help. But they have something to prove, Galway, in my book. And, uh, you know, Tipperary will be, as we all know, we're both Tipperary men. It's about time Tipperary retained an All-Ireland title for the first time since 1965. Limerick uh, have wounds to lick after last summer. I mean, if to be honest, if somebody told us after the Munster final that Tip would end up walking up the Hogan stands and Limerick wouldn't even be there to watch it in the flesh. But it just shows you how quickly things can change. You know, you, you can't make strong, definitive deductions now from a league game because you can't even make them from the, the early rounds of the championship because Tip came back one day on Ireland so form is very variable in the summer. Is there anyone in that, that you've seen with Galway either under 20, 21 in the last couple of years the Walsh Cup today, the league, that's ready to step up into this team because like you're saying it does feel like you're relying on the same old character. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't be dogmatic about it to be honest Shane. Um, you know, there, there is there is rebuilding to be done and um, what happened last year really has no relevance now. Some of these young players, if they get the opportunity, like several of them got today, Kilcommons wasn't bad there, wing forward for, for, for Galway, especially in the first 20 minutes. And There is a sameness though about a lot of these Galway players coming through and size has been an issue over the years as well. But look at they're not going to be far away at Galway if they can get a momentum going and uh, it's very early days uh, yet but as I said earlier they have you know regressed a lot quicker than we all thought not even from winning the All-Ireland two years ago but even from you know the, the, the final the following year where you know they put in a, a, a late heroics that almost pulled it out of the fire mm. Looking at Tipperary for this year, are you confident that Tipperary will, I suppose, like, you know, some years you watch Tipperary and you're like, they're not getting the best out of themselves. And as the season went on in 2019 and ultimately winning the All-Ireland, yeah. you're like, this team is getting the best out of itself. Do you think Tipper, are you confident this year that Tipperary will get the best out of themselves? I think they will. If you go back to 2010, where some of these players won their first All Ireland, I I believe Liam Sheedy stepping down in Eamon O'Shea and Michael Ryan in the weeks that followed. Um, it was a setback in the context of Tipperary driving forward from winning the All Ireland in 2010, and we 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 accept Liam's bona fides at the time. They were working around the clock. They you know, they were getting out at the top. It's a great way to go. Um, but like it took Tip six years to get back and mm. win the McCarthy Cup. So now they're, they're after winning three in ten years, and I think that's a reasonable return. Now before they made a breakthrough in 2000, 2010, they had a couple of chances to win in All Ireland before that, uh, notably in two thousand and nine, I think. So um, Tipperary hurling is in a good place, and I, I I'm delighted to see Bursley get into an All Ireland club final because. Our record in that championship has been horrendous. To think that the last team that played in an Ireland club final was Tommy Var back in the early 90s, it's its unimaginable. And it's the first time ever a tip club team were playing a Kilkenny club team, which, you know, for us traditionalists, it's its, it's good to see. But overall, um, tip will have no excuses this year if they don't retain the All-Ireland because I think they're in a good place. Liam is back there. Um, Eamon O'Shea... Look at he, he Emil O'Shea has something. The players buy into his style of coaching and movement and stuff like that. I think it's important that he's he's there as well. So, and they'll spare no effort. We can be guaranteed that. But that doesn't guarantee they'll win the All Ireland again. So, do you think it's a case that Tip need to probably find a player or two to push the lads that are there already, or, or to, to even improve the team on? Because, like, you know, that 2010 team. By the time 2013 came around and they were losing in Nolan Park in that qualifier, I think it was still pretty much 13 of the same team was there. So, I don't know. Do Tip find players quick enough? Yeah, it's it's that's the challenge, I suppose, because I I, I remember I brought in the Irish rugby coach Eddie O'Sullivan to talk to the Galway hurlers when I was in charge, and one of the things he said to them, lads. You know, um, you, you, you can't afford to be doing what you did last year, the following year, to win. Uh, if you stand still, you, you go back. You know, if you don't improve, that's, that's the mantra. So Tip probably have to be better 
next year, this year, than they were last year because they're the team that has the target on their back. They're the All-Ireland champions. And as we, as we all know, psychologically, you know, it's easier to be the underdog when you have something to prove and when you want to atone for past failures and stuff like that. But if, two, if Tip do retain the All-Ireland title, we could see potential, potential dominance for them, mm. you know. But psychologically, to retain that All-Ireland title, that's a big one. And until we crack the code, it's, it's hanging over us. Cheers, John. Grand Shane. Cheers. Thanks for watching our game. Don't forget to like and share the videos. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe.